Hello. Hi. And welcome to a somewhat rushed episode of Wheel Takes, <laughs> a podcast about the Wheel of Time, a series of fantasy novels written by Robert Jordan and completed by Brandon Sanderson. I'm Gus. I've read all of them. And I'm Allie. And I have read up to book 11, chapter 17. This podcast only contains spoilers for what Allie's already read, which again today is everything up to and including Knife of Dreams, uh, chapter 17. Allie mm. is boarding a plane in two hours. So this is going to be a quick one. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, this time. Lightning fast. By necessity. Uh, which also means that for this week and this week alone, we're going to uh, forego patron thank yous. We'll be back with those next time. Allie. Yes. How you doing? I'm doing okay. Me too. I am tired. Yes. <laughs> Otherwise, doing great. Lots going on this month, uh, including the Greenwell Cup on Twitter. Yeah, go check that out. Uh, my play is rehearsing. I'm doing a play. I may not have actually mentioned that. I'm in a play. I think you did. Yeah, the weekend of April 5th and 6th in Los Angeles. If you want to give me money to do it or to come see it, there's links in the description. Yeah, why not? Uh, it's going to be fun. I'm excited. Anyway, lots going on. A lot of traveling, too. So, a little all over the place this fine. We're recording this on a Wednesday. It's true. Thursday. It's Thursday. See, that's how... It's yeah, it's yeah, Thursday. I don't even know. I don't it's even Thursday, know. my dudes. But before anything else, we're here to talk about Elaine Trickhand. Yay! Elaine. Yeah. Allie. We're gonna pick... Where did... Where, where did we leave off? Beatles. No. Not Beatles? No. Then what? It was Elaine thinking about... Beatles? Burning down oh. the town. Elaine and her pregnancy. And her doing the thing and stuff. Yeah. And the dog over there wobbling his head around. Yeah, my baby. Okay. Um. Yeah. Uh. Elaine. Yeah, Elaine, Elaine is pregnant and she's cranky. And you know what? Relatable. Um... Do you want me to read my notes? Yeah, Al, why don't you give us... We're going to start out with chapter 15, a different skill. That's the logo. What is it? It is Spears. Spears. Uh, and give a us, buckler, I think. And a buckler. I've never actually known what a buckler is. It's a little shield. Aw. Yeah, it's a small shield, like, used for parrying. Oh. Yeah. Now I know. Yeah. Uh, chapter 15, yay, guards women. Yeah. We love cool. them. Shattering glass elevators yeah, or whatever. Yeah, sure, yeah. Yay, guards women. By the time someone finished searching my room for assassins, I would have forgotten what I needed to go in there Me for. Me too. Forgive Rand for not thinking you'd be dumb enough to get knocked up during the apocalypse. She did, in I, fact, deliberately choose not to take birth control. Someone else, I, someone did comment on this to me and was like, she thought it'd be her only chance. That's true. It's true. You know, I don't, it doesn't make it worse, but... Does it make it much better? I also think it's very funny and appropriate that she's specifically blaming Rand for this. Yeah. I think that is really funny. Like, genuinely true That to is genuinely funny. funny. Yeah. But I'm also like, girl, it takes two to tango. It does. You did, you were Though quite, I have heard that pregnancy with twins is hell. You were quite forthright in the removal of his pants. Why the fuck are they taking Avienda away? Did Robert start uh, getting yeah. mad that we said they were his couple with the most chemistry? Wise one stuff. I don't like it. Wise one stuff. She's got to go. You, mo you remember all that important wise one training? I don't care. Got to do it. I don't care. What she is, can't is she going to have a training montage? We got to have a montage. Why do we have to take her away for that montage? There's plenty of wise women here. Why can't she just get... there's a montage. Or maybe montage? there's not. What if, what if she doesn't actually do any training? What if she just like ha is off page? What if we just lose Avienda now? What if we just don't see her again until like midway through book 13 or 14? Imagine. What if? Why are you giving me new things to be afraid because of? Because it's more fun. If we don't see her until book 13 or 14, which now I'm worried is really going to happen, I'm going to lose my shit. Maybe we never if see her again. If we're being like, okay, we're not going to see... Moraine forever, which I'm worried is a thing, or Avienda forever, then what am I, what are we doing here? We're These are chilling. my, why are we taking my cool women away from me? Perrin has to be thinking. Oh, yeah, we gotta, we gotta talk about Elaine's pregnancy and Perrin's wife. We need to spend more time with mercenary captains who grope serving maids. The fact that that is happening and we're just like, 
oh, well, I mean, yeah, she's trying to keep him away from them. But like, then the mercenaries turn around and are groping people. And she's like, you're not allowed to do that. It's like, where is this energy, though, with what's his face? I need I need that to be like, yes, correct. They are not allowed to do that. And that is bad. But like, can we also have that same energy with Mylan Sheath or whatever his name is? Doylan Mellar. Yeah, whatever. Um, Do- D- Doily wait, Mailer. Wait, wait. But I am mad that they're taking Avienda away. I need yes, her. Yes, of course you are. Because Avienda we already and shelved Elaine her. We already shelved her. Combo. And now we're shelving her well, more. What if we're actually kicking it off? With what if we're about to enter Elaine Avienda's ascendancy arc? She's going to be doing cool shit, learning how to drop kick people. I want that. Maybe. Uh, that would be good. Could be. Now I think? have now I have hope again. Or maybe it's somewhere between the two. Is it somewhere between? I don't. Well, I know. I can maybe. Tell you. I'm excited about that potential. Uh okay. But I think Robert got mad at me. He was like, "Oh, you're gonna make fun of me for having such a sexually charged couple that was not my intent." Well, then I'm taking them away from you. Jokes you on you. Don't get the things you love, the Barbies that you want to kiss. No. I know what he's doing. He's sending her away so that something can happen to Elaine without Avienda getting hurt. That's Fuck. very possible. Past me is on something. That's very possible. Could be. I'm concerned. Uh, and then this goodbye. Tell me this is not girlfriends. No, listen. Do not even begin to fuck with me, they Robert. Are, Do not dare. They're queerer than the concept of queerness. They are queerness themselves. I saw a meme once that said, what's more bisexual or pansexual? Being bisexual or whatever the fuck Avienda and Elaine have going on. That is the most bisexual thing I've ever seen it's in my that. life. They're it's that. They're both chaos bisexuals. Yeah. We know this. No, it's that. It's that. Yeah. The, why else would they be so chaotic? Please. Exp- Chapter 15. Literally everyone in these books is, are chaos bisexuals, and I refuse to believe otherwise. Chapter 15, a different skill... What's that skill? Uh, I think Avienda can tell uh, when it, when she squeezes her boobs, she can tell when an angry owl is right. raining or whatever. That's it. Yeah, it's weather control she, with the boobies. Can she tell? She can tell uh, what an angry owl does. Correct. She can determine what angry owl can do. What were you gonna say? I was going to make a dirty joke, and then I realized that it wouldn't be very funny. I was just going to say something filthy to try to get you to react. And then I was like, no. Was it cunnilingus? I was going to say cunnilingus. (laughs) (laughs) To Elaine's fury, a quiet, simmering fury that clenched her jaw, she got lost on the way to her apartments. Those rooms had been hers since she left the nursery, yet twice she took a turn only to find that it did not lead where she expected. So... There's like three pages of people not being able to get where they want to go. Yeah. Is that a bubble of weevil? It might be. Elaine seems to think it's just her being scatterbrained. But then Brigitte is also like, uh, what the fuck? I don't, I don't think that's what it is. You don't think it's scatterbrain? I don't think it's pregnancy brain. No, I think it's, I, I think if Brigitte is also experiencing this. Also, I feel like she says herself, like, this, these are hallways I've traveled in since I was a kid. She does. Yeah. And the fact that it keeps happening, it's not just like one-offs every now and then. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, it does happen to me a lot, but it, I have ADHD. At one point, Brigitte goes, I think I'll try to find my rooms if I can have just a few words. Yeah, when something is weird, I will just turn to Gus and be like, is this weird or is it just my ADHD or EDS or fiber? So, so I, you think this is... She, a... I feel like she should she should temperature test everybody else. Yeah. So you, you think this is something because everybody else is kind of starting to get confused and she goes, don't fucking say anything. I would go like, say more. Well, cause she thinks they're going to go like, oh, sweet, sweet incubating Which baby that thing. I, I get. Yeah, I, I get do it. Not I totally like understand. Being, also, I like being told that I am adorable, but I do not like being treated like a child. No. And those are very, they're different, very different things. things. That's true. Also, Robert does think, have like Elaine think to herself, luckily, I'm not experiencing all of these other fairly typical signs of pregnancy, just mood swings and tender titties. Of course. It's got to be the boobies. Of course it is. It's got to be the boobies. Of course. Her boobies hurt. It's the boobies. It's all boobies. All the time. WKF boob. Trying to make a radio joke. I don't think it's Like, I just... 
men should be arrested. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Because he's because he's focusing I, on no, mood swings fa- and boobies. Well, it's it's the fact that it feels like any opportunity to talk about boobs, yeah. we're gonna take it. And you know what though? You know what though? Fair, fair, fair. Uh, I mean, have you listened to any of our podcasts? We talk about boobs all the time. I've never no. ever spoken no. about a boob in my life, including right now. We think and talk about the guardswoman, guardswomen, any of that, any anything about that. Some a lot of people are like Ugh, women, but it's a matriarchy, mm. so it's fine. I love it. Yeah, I love everything great. about it. I wish that she would promote one of them over Doily Mailer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That guy, he sucks yeah and i think I i'm him. calling him doily mailer for now on <clears throat> that's fair i'm gonna just refuse to learn what his name is yeah well fair because i feel like that would rankle him it would yeah even though he's decided to use a fake name which is very similar to his name because mm-hmm. his name is david hanlon he's going by doylan miller not that similar well, it's not dissimilar, though. I don't know. I feel like if I were using a fake name, I would not go for a name that was, like, adjacent at no. all to mine. No. I'm kind of skipping through some of this because Allie has to board a plane pretty soon. I, I, I did say, Allie, maybe we could record this over Zoom while you're out of town. She said, they're the shortest chapters in the history of time. Yeah. They're short. And all due respect, is there a ton? No. For a... That's never stopped us before. That's though. never stopped us before. They, they're going to go meet with the mercenaries, and Avienda goes, Do you think I should wear wet under clothes, Elaine, since we are going to meet these mercenaries? She wants to wear those clothes so she bad. She does. She desperately wants to wear And so. we love that for her. It's adorable. I love that she has come into a fashion renaissance for herself. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, and I think I think that is cultural appreciation, not yeah, cultural no, appropriation. Yeah, no, I think it's great. Uh, and she's like fiddling with this dagger, and Elaine is like, "What is it with you and the little dagger thing?" It's an angriel, right? It's a terra angriel. What's it do? It is a dagger that always points north. I thought to give it to you, but you've never said anything about it, so I thought I might be wrong. Okay, people need to stop doing that in these books. And then we would believe you are safe from some dangers. We need to stop waiting for someone else to bring things up. When you are not. So I decided to keep it. That way, if I'm right, at least I could protect you. And if I am wrong, it does no harm. And she's like, what the fuck are you talking about? What the fuck are you talking about? This, I think that if you have this in your possession, the shadow cannot see you. Not the eyeless. Oh, nice. Or the shadow twisted. Maybe not even leaf blighter. Except that I must be wrong if you did not see it. And Elaine is like, uh, you can, I can't, come over here. And she takes her into another room. And they got all these Terran Grial. She's see, like, they what even, do these do? They complete each other. Because Elaine yeah, can, can make, make them. stuff. Yeah. And Avienda knows what it does. I need this couple to kiss. So they take her in the next on room. On the lips. And she's like, all right, start picking stuff up and tell me what you think it does. And they complete each other's talent. Ugh. She grabs. What does she grab? Listen, friends can exist, right? Close female friendships can exist. Of course. But like this is not one of them. No, no it's not. Close female friendships. Let's see. Who has a close female friendship that is so platonic? Uh, in the show, Moraine and Alana. So platonic. Yeah. There we go. There's one. Yeah. Nine even a, an Egwene. Not a hint of sexual not tension. Not even remotely. These two, there is so much tension. Yeah. This departure from oh, each other. Egwene and Elaine, no tension. No tension. Avienda and Egwene, no, no tension. No tension. It's, but these two. These two. And obviously Swan and Moraine. Yeah. Dripping with tension. So, Phrase, phrasing. Yeah, yeah, I was thinking that. So Avienda grabs a slim black rod, a pace long and so flexible it could be bent into a circle and spring back. Huh? Yeah, what's... What, is that a riding I'm crop? I'm pretty sure this is like a ride. It's yeah, something like that. You cannot tell me that wait, he did wait, not know wait, wait. what he was doing. You cannot tell me she that he it. did not know this was a she couple. She touched it and jerked her hand back swiftly, wiping her fingers unconsciously on her skirt. This causes pain. Nynaeve, to- Nynaeve told us that, Elaine said impatiently. Nynaeve Almira did not say you can change how much pain each blow you gives. You cannot tell me. At least I think that can be done. I think one blow can feel like one or a hundred. But I am only guessing, Elaine. It is only what I think. 
You cannot tell me he did not know what he was doing. I think that's a BDSM Come tear on Grail, on. man. Like, I'm pretty sure that that's like a... Come on! A little spank whip you tear on Grail. You mix that with the red rod, and uh-huh. you've got yourself a party. There's there's a cap that controls a Lord. device. A cap that controls a device of some sort. Listen, this is not my style. Very much, like, good for whoever is into it. But, like... You cannot tell me that this man did not know, one, what he was doing with this. And two, you cannot tell me that he did not write these two as a couple at this point. Like, all the sexual shit that he puts in their stuff. There's a lot with these two Come on. It's like porn. It is like porn. There's no way. He just was was scared about writing lesbians in the 90s. There's an iPod. It's not. Overtly. Uh, a small hinged box, apparently ivory and cover- covered with rippling red and green stripes, held music, hundreds of tunes, perhaps thousands. Which is cool. There's a dehumidifier. A dehumidifier on Grail? There's a dehumidifier tear on Grail, which we could have we used, could have used that. in the studio during Moldgate. The ongoing sa- saga the of some on- mold. Going mold again. There's a There's a bunch of cell phone tear on Grail. Cool. There's like 15 oh, cell phones why here don't on Grail. They, they like give it to each other. Or just make tiny gateways. Or, oh. you know, use the dream world or well, any Elaine of the other can't ways. can't really do that. Any, right that's now. true because of the nuttered boodles. Which I just, I don't agree. I don't agree. Any of the other 5,000. Are you calling the what? fetuses nuttered boodles? No, this, the, no I'm not. The, I'm, I'm calling the weaves buttered noodles and twitch sw- switching it to nuttered boodles. Because when she tries to grab them, they're like nuttered boodles. I thought that like the fetuses probably right now look like nuttered boodles. They might look like buttered nude. I don't and know. And I was kind of like, uh, kind fetus? of. Is it, was it count as, a, what is it, was a blastocyst at that point? I don't remember. Uh, um, a zygote? A zygote is just a cell that has, a f- it's been a while since biology. I thought it was blastocyst then zygote. No, a zygote I is like. I zygote was like near baby. No, a zygote is like a single cell that has well fine it's been a long time chromosomes i can hear them typing yeah i'm gonna let it i'm gonna let them type well because we're we don't remember and we're asking i don't remember any of the any of the stages in prenatal development yeah so you tell us i don't remember at what point it's considered a fetus i don't remember any of this shit um me neither anyway i did see dune and that's got like little baby thing in it Okay, that, that freaked was, that me out freaky. a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Dune's good. I, I don't think we're meant to look at fetuses that long. Dune takes part two. Because they're Maybe a little coming creepy. someday. Uh, what else does she have? Um, there's a there's a there's another thing that cuts stuff. Uh, there's a little guy holding his hand out that is like stout. Yeah. In the name of love, it appears to be rat repellent. Interesting. Oh, that's so much cuter than like the scary, sad options a for rats. S- a stone carving the size. It's a little of- guy going no. A stone carving the size of her hand, all deep blue curves. It felt like stone, at least, though somehow it did not really look carved. Was for growing something, not plants. It made her think of holes, only they were not exactly holes. And um, she did not believe anyone had to channel to make it work. Only sing so the right song. You're thinking about... Oh, my God. Is this what the tinkers are looking for? No, it does not sing. No, I know. But, like, is that why they're looking for the song? Mm, is it this thing? No, they're looking for the song because of the Age of Legends and the... Yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. But is there, like, a bigger bigger thing about the song, maybe? Uh, like possibly. if they find the song and they sing it into this damn thing. What uh, what other well holes causes stuff to grow holes. holes. So they repair the bore. No, it causes holes to grow. Causes holes it to grow. It made her think of holes, only they were not exactly holes. Holes that aren't holes. And she did not believe anyone had to channel. Well, I mean, only sing the right song. Holes that aren't holes. <laughs> I mean, Speaking okay. of these, you know. Listen, you're all filthy. How dare you? Shame. Uh, holes that aren't holes? And you have to sing into it. And you have to sing into the holes that aren't holes. No, you have to sing into the thing to make stuff What's grow. What's it look like? It's like a bunch of curves. Okay. It makes stuff grow and it's holes that aren't holes. Is it like, it's not like gateways or some shit. Is it gateways? Who else sings? Well, the, the O-Gear sing. Yeah, what do the O-Gear have in their steadings? 
and in their groves. It makes gateways. N- w- gateways? It makes way gates. I'm pretty sure this is the talisman of growing. Yeah. Well, because I was thinking about the lo- about them too. Yeah. I-, I-, I could be wrong, but I think this is the thing they use to make the ways. Fascinating. Isn't that cool? I think that's true. But like, are the songs related? Are all these songs related? Maybe. Because maybe that's how the tinkers reunite or something. Maybe. But before we learn about that, we're going to take a quick ad break. Welcome back. Allie, there's one more Terangriel they look at. Mm Mm-hmm. A statuette of a stout, bearded man with a merry smile holding a book. Two feet tall, it appeared to be age-darkened bronze, and was certainly heavy enough to be. Looking at him always makes me want to smile too, my lady. Me as well, Stephanie Pelden, Avienda said. He holds more than the book you see. He holds thousands and thousands of books. Oh my god, he's an e-reader. Yeah. And side iron enveloped her. She touched twin, twin flows of fire and earth to the bronze figure, to the bronze figure, and the words Answin and Imswin appear. Truth, lies, and truth, the two words might be translated, or in context, perhaps fiction and not fiction would be better. It's basically an e-reader. It's an e-reader. Now, I want you to think about what this looks like. It's, I mean, a, it's a little guy with a beard. It's like the fat man on Griel. No? Who gives stories. Oh, it's like a gleeman? And creates text. It's a writer. It's Robert Jordan. It's Robert Jordan. He can't help himself. It's a mini Robert. Ellie, it's a, it's a tiny Robert. It's a tiny Robert. I love this thing so much. Oh my so God, much. I hope this is in the show. I they just make a little a, tiny Robert Jordan action Robert. figure. It's a tiny Robert. Rafe, make it happen. Uh, Hold on, let me see if anyone's made fan art of it. Library Terran Griel. I love this thing because I'm reading it through it and every time I go, it's a tiny Robert. It's a tiny Robert. Yeah, Robert Jordan says that uh, this is his Alfred Hitchcock moment. I mean... I love this Here's thing. the thing. As an artist, you can't resist putting, like, little bits of yourself in stuff. And it makes Come everybody on. smile when they look at it. Yeah. And I think that's just the sweetest thing. That is the I sweetest love, thing. I love the tiny Robert. I, d- I would die for the I tiny Robert. I would die Robert. for the tiny Robert. All right, yeah, so she's got the library. Not and, to be dramatic, I know. but I would die for the tiny rope. And we talk more about how Elaine is safe until the babies are born, although Elaine also kind of reflects on herself like, yeah, but, you know, things could go wrong, so I think maybe she is just using this as an excuse to do what she wants rather than actually fully believing it. Mm-hmm. Which, okay. And then all of a sudden the, she's like, all right, we got a lot of cool shit to take care of, and the wise ones are like, cool shit? Hell no, we're not doing cool shit here. Get the fuck out. Uh... So Nadira, the the wise one, comes in and is like, hey, we're leaving. All of the Goshina are leaving, including you. Why? And why now? Because Rand said. Now, we haven't seen Rand fuck in a book. Fuck Rand. <laughs> yeah. He said, I'll be into two? All of them. Why does she have to go? All of them. Why does he hate our fun? Your training has been in the bands too long, Avienda. Go and change into proper clothing. She's like, but I, but I, she I, likes I like my the girlfriend. Silk. Whatever you may have learned, it seems you have forgotten as much, such as the fact that you are an apprentice still. The power is the least of what a wise one must know, else only those who can channel would be wise ones. Now go and change, and count your luck that I do not make you return in your skin. The vase is trapping. And Elaine is like, prom, prom, promise? Um, <laughs> The tents are being struck as we speak, and if the clan's departure is delayed, you will face this trap. I know I'm not going to die while I'm pregnant, but I could face the little death. (laughs) Yes, so she, yeah. Anyway, thoughts on this? I, mm, It's something to do with Rand. Also, the wise ones are then like, "Ah, ah, you're not doing all the right things as a pregnant woman. Lane's like, I'm going to fucking kill everyone. When did we last see him? A book ago. What was he, what was he doing? Hanging out. Oh, but he was going to make peace with the Sean. No, Chan. no. So peace we don't even with know, the Sean. Chan. At this point, we don't even know if this is actually coming from him because he could be kidnapped by Samurai. Peace at this point. with the Sean Chan. I will make peace with my foot in your have ass. Have you seen him this book? I don't think we have. No, no. Peace with the Sean. Chan. I will make peace with my foot in your ass. That's what will happen. Uh, They're angry that Elaine doesn't have a midwife. 
And she's like, well, you all shut up. Just shut up. Rand really was like, all right. R- Perrin would never make peace with someone who wanted to enslave his wife. He he made peace. Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay. Right. Because obviously the Sean Chan don't want to do that. But Rand, like if, if Fayul could channel, the Fashan Chan would be dead to him. Probably. There would be no way he'd work with them. Rand has three wives, basically. And two out of three can channel. And you, you tell me they they wouldn't see what men can do and be like, oh, got to do oh, something yeah, with definitely, that. Definitely, definitely. But it would be like a different thing. Slap a fucking. They duck a ball her so fast. Yeah. Her head would, her little short curly head would spin. Yeah. Avienda comes back and they're like, hey, she's like, hey, girl, hey, girly pop, take the, the knife. I think she's already been Dacaval. Min? Wasn't she? No. When? Oh, she was just working like around them. Yeah. Okay. Uh, he, she gives Elaine the see no evil dagger or evil no see dagger. I don't know. Sure. Sure. And Elaine gives her a couple of Angriol and Nadira keeps talking about the strap. Okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> we all know what Nadir's all about now, oh, don't we? A lot of straps lot in of this straps, chapter. Yeah. And they keep calling each other sister and crying and hugging and crying and hugging and hugging and crying and crying and hugging and calling each other sister and saying sister stop over and over. Stop saying sister. And they keep that saying is sister. not what you are. It's just Please sister after stop sister it. after sister. No, it is not. You know no. I, mean? I think they say sister I have had times. sisters. I have had people I have loved like sisters. None of that is this. And I like this. They put a little coronet on Elaine because Avienda leaves. It's very sad. And then they put a little coronet on Elaine. So these mercenaries won't forget who they're talking to, my lady. Elaine did not realize her shoulders had slumped until she straightened them. Her sister was gone, yet she had a city to defend and a throne to gain. Duty would have to sustain her now. (laughs) And that's the end of chapter 15. Chapter 16, Allie, the new follower. That's the logo. What is it? It is a, yes, and I I made a note about this, actually, the Black Aja logo. Blaja symbol. What if I called them the Blaja? You think that would go over well? No. The Blaja symbol. The Blaja? The Blaja. I feel like they're, that. It feels like like, like a slur a British person would use, and I'm not sure what for. A Blaja? Blaja. Oh, it definitely means like a codger. Yeah. Like an old blodger. Something. Anyway, I'm a never going to say that again. chip off the old blodger. And if you tell me that I ever said blodger, I didn't. Did you say Zowie Powie? I did on say Zowie our... Powie on a YouTube thing. That was a mistake and I regretted it. <laughs> I know. I put it I because I was editing it and you heard yourself say Zowie Powie and you popped in and you were like, what I don't know what the fuck, fuck was that was. Yeah. And so then I put in an editor's note. That you didn't know what that yes, was and didn't that. stand by thank it. Thank you for that. Uh, Allie, do you have notes for chapter 16, The New Follower? Do I? And do you have anything else you want to say about the end of leaving other than you're angry about it? I'm angry about it. All right. I I don't like it at all. No. The fuck have in your screen? I don't know. It just went dark. It did. For no reason. Display and brightness. All right. All right, there we go. Uh, ba, 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 ba. Uh, fuck, Black Aja shit. The narrative keeps protecting Van Deen, and I just cannot buy it. Because uh, Elaine keeps going, one of these gals is a black Aja. It's got to be. Van what Dean, are their names? Though. I keep forgetting their I, names. I couldn't tell you. And Sir, this is the thing. Sir, Sir, Saritha. Sriracha. Saritha Sir, Franklin yeah, is what right, I was Saritha saying. Saritha Franklin. And then the other one. Uh, Ka- Cad- Cadnium. Cadnine. Car- Cariana. I have no. Cariana. Cytosine, Cytos- yes, like the DNA component, cyclobenzaprine, cyclobenzaprine, yeah, the muscle relaxer, yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's what they call her, yeah, is that it? That's all you got at the tower. So, you but you're pretty yeah. sure it's Van Dien. I, I could not be more convinced by the fact that the narrative keeps trying to protect her but so hard. Ali, kinswomen are going missing. Yeah. Who has Van Dien been spending time with? Yes, the kin- yes, she <laughs> has specifically spending time with the kids. Yes, women? she has. <laughs> well, that wouldn't couldn't be her. Right? Now the question is, why does she keep killing kins with it now? 
Oh. Probably because... Who said it was her? It couldn't be her. It's her. her. She's, she's grief-stricken. Bullshit, she's... Gre- well, yeah, I, she is probably because she had to murder her own sister. And so now, nothing's stopping her from killing everybody else. She's already done the hard one. But she's she's got perfume on. Adelius got too close. And it started to make me feel like Varen's what? Black Aja as well. What? Yeah. What? what? As much as I love Varen, what? if they combine them in the show... There's no way that they're not both Absurd. Black Gaja. Who who could And Robert Jordan's not thing. trying to trick me with the Black Gaja. If someone's suspicious, they're usually suspicious. The blue reception room, named for its arch <sighs> I can't talk today. Named for its arch ceiling painted what is happening? Plus, Robert Jordan hated ADHD is it people. The mold? First it was there Ver- Deshiva and now it's Varen. Don't forget Masima and Mishima. Oh yeah, no. Robert Jordan hates me specifically. <laughs> But there's a tiny Robert. But the, and a I forget. Tiny he's, Robert. He's forgiven. I love the tiny he Robert. He gifted us the tiny Robert. The and tiny therefore, Robert. I, I, that literally made up for the entire slog. Literally, I I, I'm not mad about Robert. the slog anymore because the tiny Robert exists. I like the tiny Robert because I remember there's how, how much Vonnegut have you read? Um, I, I think exactly two of them. Yeah, I've read like four, maybe. And there's one of them called breakfast of champions which he says he wrote i think that was the second one oh, really? no that's a weird one no to read. wait wasn't i in a vonnegut you were in you were in cat's cradle yeah i was in cat's cradle so i've definitely read cat's cradle did you read slaughterhouse i definitely read slaughterhouse yeah. and i feel like i've read fucking breakfast of champions because you were reading breakfast of champions i did yeah several years ago and so then i think i read breakfast of champions because you read breakfast breakfast of champions champions because i always read what you tell you do me to that read. a lot and you when was the last time you read something that I told you to read? The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes right here on this very podcast. Fine. Ba-na-na-na. Ba-na-na-na. I'll All read right. more things you told me to read. Um, no, it's okay. I want to. You're good at things. No, now so I don't want you to. I'm no. going to. <laughs> Reverse psychology. So, yeah, Vonnegut, though, I remember how I was like, oh, it's gonna be. well, it's only 35 minutes in. Um at the end, he he wrote Breakfast of Champions as a 50th birthday present to himself. We're going to release something under an hour and they're going to be like, are the you dying? What's going on? And at the end of that book, he's just like, and also I was there. I was in the auditorium and I had on sunglasses that reflected everything. They were big mirrored reflective sunglasses. And I, when you looked at my eyes, you just saw the world reflected back in my sunglasses. And I was like, shut up, Kurt. It was good. But it was a little bit like, shut, shut up, Kurt. Up, Kurt. Now, th- that self-insert compared to <laughs> compared to the tiny Robert, tiny Robert. Give me the tiny Robert all day. I love the tiny Robert. You know what? I feel like all writers should put a tiny version a of tiny themselves. A tiny version of themselves. I will forgive it. I get the, the impulse, though, where you're like, I'm writing something. I should be allowed to put a little something of myself in. Yes, absolutely. And Robert picked tiny Robert, Well, but also Matt. But also loyal. But also Gareth Brynn. But also Gareth Brynn. Yeah, a little bit. But also... Mostly the tiny Robert. Mostly the tiny Robert. Yeah. Gareth Brynn, not really. Definitely Matt, though, with the hat. Matt, for sure. Matt with the hat. Yeah. Yeah. And all of the spanking. But... Uh, (laughs) Not, I'm not giving anything away, but there's a, there is a sword that just shows up out of nowhere in the Sanderson books, and it is a sword that was given to Brandon. It's not a sword? It's literally a sword. And it was given to Brandon by Harriet from Robert Jordan's collection. That's sick as fuck. And he was just like, I'm gonna put the sword in because I think it was a really nice thing and I like the sword and I think it's sweet. That's so, so cool. So like, no major spoilers. There's just a sword that appears. It's that sword. Wait, that's sick. Yeah. That's so cool. We have a sword. I gave we it to you for your birthday. We do have a sword. It's a little rusty. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta oil it, it up. It is. Yeah, because oh, no. it was in the fucking mold room, the humid ass oh, mold yeah, room. Yeah, you gotta fix that. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta fix that. It was a nice sword. It is a nice sword. It's a great sword. It's got a little rust on it now. I gotta fix that. Yeah, anyway, chapter sixteen. The, the mercenaries. Uh, balloon, balloon, balloon. Okay. Uh, yeah, uh, Jesus the guards, Christ. women, and the mercenaries carry on. The carry on. That's their names. Carry on and, and Saritha. Saritha. And fuckface doily mailer is in there. Yeah, we don't talk about him either. And we don't need to talk about him at all. I don't like him at all. And Elaine is like, hey, motherfucker, don't you have a job? 
Thank you. And he's I'm like, here for him. Being- I'm doing my job. I'm right here doing my job. And she's like, you are doing a good job of being a sack of shit. And maybe you should go and do your actual job. And he's like, I'm here for her being mean to him. But I'm also like, maybe we shouldn't provoke him either. And he's, do you know what I mean? He leaves and Bak- ba- Bakuvan is like, you know, I know that dude. Like, I've met him before. And she's like, no, really? Ask questions. And he's like, yeah. And she's like, I'm not going to follow up. Because if I follow up, he might know I'm asking questions. I need, I need these people to start following up when other people say shit. So the only one who follows up when people say shit is Gawain. And he always comes to the wrong fucking conclusion. There appears to be an argument being made by the text now that Elaine was always on to David Hanlon from the beginning, and that the only reason she ever brought him into her service in the first place was to figure out who had sent him. I'm going to decide that's true, and here's why. <laughs> it makes me want to uh, rant about her less. It's it's weird, because, like, I calmed through Winter's heart when he shows up, because, you know, you remember that this happens later, and I'm rereading Winter's heart, and I'm like, there is zero textual stuff in Winter's heart to suggest that. It is exclusively stuff that comes in later books. Now, maybe Robert Jordan had intended this. Or maybe it could be that she started to figure it out later. Yeah, that's also possible. It could be that initially in the initial shock of nearly being like, assassinated. Yeah, I'll pretend that he's my baby daddy and all this other stuff. And, and then now as she's he started like, I to fucking suck, hate this guy. Yeah, and then as he started to suck, she was kind of like, what are the odds that this guy who sucks showed up just in the nick of time? Yeah. To save my life. Could be. Like, I feel like he is the worst spy ever. And she is, because I've just, you know what? I just decided this just now. He's the worst spy ever. And she's like, I just need to keep him thinking that I'm not odd to him. But it's weird because he just keeps killing people. Oh, that's true. Like, he keeps fucking killing people. Every other chapter, like, she sends someone to follow him and the guy dies. Well, when was the last time he's done that? Five times since the beginning of this book. I feel like, th- and, and I, how Begita, many people do you send after someone b- and he kills before Elaine you go, maybe I shouldn't five send people. more people after. And this chapter is about them finding another guy to send after him. Oh, yeah. They find like a crusty random man. N- not the crusty random man. Poor crusty random man. We're almost certainly not going to get the third chapter done before Allie has to leave. Uh, Definitely not. Uh, uh, realizing, looking at the clock now. Um, maybe she'll, we'll zoom it tomorrow or something. Anyway, okay, moving, th- what time is it? Oh. Yeah, I yeah go. we're okay, 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 okay. Okay, we're near, yeah, okay. Uh, uh, the mercenaries, they're awful. They know Doyle and Mel are. They do not volunteer the fact that he's using a false name. Unhelpful. She but does not ask. Also, I get it, because why would they? Uh, because they don't seem to like her very much and they're trying to extort her. Any thoughts on the mercenaries? Or is it just, oh my God. They suck. Yeah, they're awful. Yeah, wow. They really do. I I kind of tried to stand up for them, I think, last episode and now I'm like, meh. Well, yeah, I did too. But they're just atrocious. Well, at least these particular ones. Yeah. Again, the Band of the Red Hand technically is a mercenary army. Yeah, I feel bad about the idea that all mercenaries suck, but these do. These guys suck. So it seems like one of them at least is lying about having to send money to orphans and widows. Oh, no, he definitely is because everyone else goes like, like, bro, what what the fuck? (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Yeah, there's just like a bunch of stuff where they're like, oh, well, you know, got to give us money. And she's like, I'm not going to do that. I hate you and I hate this. And Kariana and Saritha are like, yeah, you should, st- whatever. So do you want to, anything about this? They just, she's, it's, this is quibbling over like men. And even though she, she would lose a thousand men if the mercenaries left and Charles Guy Bond's 10,000 men doesn't make yeah, up Yeah, but she for can't that. let them extort her because then the other mercenary groups will want yeah, that money and too. And she's also concerned that if she tells them to pound sand, that they will, other mercenaries will switch sides. So then the Aes Sedai step in. Yeah. And they're like, we support Elaine Tracand. We don't support Amarilla. Yeah. Amarillis. Yeah. From the Music Man and her 76 trombones. Yeah. So they're like, uh, if you join her side, you will have made an enemy of the White Tower. And Elaine 
Saritha and Karyana say that, and Elaine is like, damn, I can't believe one of you's got to be Black Aja. That's fucked up that one of the other no. is Black Aja. That's no. mad fucked up. No, it is Van Dean. It is Van Dean. It is Van fucking Dean. I am losing my shit. She is the one who's spending time with all these fucking kinswomen. She is the one who is like doing all the shady shit. She is like, she's the one who like walks in and is like, oh, is my sister dead? Like, shut up. There's no way. There's no way it's not her. Not to mention that in the show, Adelius is constantly wearing those red flowers. Hmm. Anyway, they they leave and then the guards also leave and it's just her and Brigitte and Haltwin Nori and uh, Rini Harfer. Is that her name? The maid? Yeah, Rini Harfer. Elaine is like, I want good news, motherfuckers. And they're like, well, uh, hold on that. And they they ward the room and the Mr. Harfer is like Aramilla thinks that she's going to be able to invade any day now. And she's like, why is this good news? How what how 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 is that how is that good? Yeah. And she's like, it's actually not. It's not. Yeah. And then uh Hallwin Nori is like, hey, I found another man that we can sacrifice on the pyre that is Doylan Mellor. I just think we should call a spade a spade and stop sending people after him all the time. He's clearly on to on to them doing that. Yeah. It just feels like at this point, it's kind of dumb. And this dude comes in, and his name is Sam Wilhark. And okay, but I kind of feel like also that somehow Sam Wilhark is going to turn into a baddie. And they're like, "Hey, man, how you doing?" He's like, "I didn't, I didn't, I didn't cut any purses." And they're like, "Why? Why do you have nine hundred purses spilling out of your pockets like so much of Mom's spaghetti?" And he's like, mm-hmm. ah, "Money spilling out of your pockets like so much of Mom's spaghetti." It's a meme. Oh, do you put spaghetti in your pockets? You got to keep a little. Sp- what if you want to have a spa day? Spaghetti day. That's an always sunny joke. The Internet is confusing. Anyway. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, she's like, well, we could have you put to death, but I'm also instead of that going to have you die following d- doily mailer. You know, theft, fe- I, like putting someone to death for theft feels harsh. I don't know. Yeah. We don't know the circumstances of this man's life. No. He well, could be a, a Jean Valjean. He could be. He keeps robbing people and keeping their purses as trophies. So I think he might be a kleptomaniac, which... Which is, is not his you know, fault. That's yeah. a brain thing. That's it. That's yeah. Uh, so again, death feels harsh. So he keeps stealing stuff and that's a shame. And And she's like, well, guess what? Today is your lucky day, motherfucker. Today, you get to follow a man who has killed so many people. Sound good? And he's like, yup, that's good by me. I'm super into that. I mean, why not? And then she lays a... a the, she the, didn't really give him much of a choice. You remember Moiraine's magic coin spell from book one? Yes. Yeah, she does that. Oh. That came back. She drops that on his belt buckle. Like aunt, like niece. Yeah. And Elaine is like, I fear I may have just given Melar a sixth victim. He hardly seems capable of following his own shadow. I mean, Melar the Ripper over here. I want whoever put that bloody man in my palace. I want them so badly my teeth ache. And it's like, you put that bloody man in your palace. I mean, that's true. But also Millie Skane did. Yeah. I think I she's think, trying to find Millie Skane. I think Skane. you're right. I think the implication here is that she realized about two months after instating him, oh my God. I think she realized it and then she was like, was okay. This was the stupidest thing I've ever done. So this was a plan then. Yeah. And now she's like, well, I can't let him be on to the fact that I know that this is a plan. Yeah. I think that's also why she's sending like kind of shady people to follow him because he might dismiss that as somebody shady sending yeah. people after him yeah. as opposed to like, if she sent castle guards following him, I think that's the biggest evidence of all that she's sending these kind of like expendable shady people after him, not like Birgitta. Yeah. And Halwin Or Nori- Avienda, who definitely would be a good spy. Halwin Nori goes, Trust me, my lady, cart purses are um, stealthy by nature, yet they seldom last long. But I feel like this one might, because Robert Jordan loves presenting us with a crusty old man and then having him be a baddie. Hark has lasted at least 20 years. A number of the purses in his um, collection were embroidered with prayers of thanks for the end of the Aiel War. Those went out of fashion very quickly, as I recall. 
And Brigitte goes, I could arrest Melar and have him put to the question. You'd have no need of Hark then. And they're like, you can't arrest him. He hasn't broke. He, he, we have no proof. We have no evidence against him. He's definitely can't uh, arrest him. But he's like shady as fuck. And Brigitte is like, it is blindingly obvious that the man is a fucking piece of shit. And I'm like, maybe you could arrest him for fondling guardswomen. Ooh. That would be good. I'd be cool with making uh, workplace harassment illegal. And Elaine goes, no, we have suspicions, not proof. Those five men might have fallen afoul of footpads. The law is quite clear on when someone may be put to the question and suspicions are not reason enough. Solid evidence is needed. All right, but I do like that we need solid evidence before we're torturing people. That's a good thing. I don't think we should torture people. I do again think it kind of sucks that Rand can just declare that people are hanged for theft and Elaine has to follow the rules. But I am glad that, you know, I'd rather err on this side. Well, I'm like not team hanging people I'm not for either. Theft. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I, I, I just think that seems too harsh. I agree. I think it's bad. We don't know why they're stealing. The queen must obey the law she makes or there is no law. I will not begin by breaking the law. Neither will you. Do you understand me, Begita Trahelian? Rand, meanwhile, is like, I am the law. Rand, Rand like, is like, fuck it. Who's, who, who, law? Never heard of her. So, I, frankly, yes, I am actually like, Elaine's doing the right thing. Uh, yeah. She should never have brought the goddamn man into the palace in the first place, but apart from that, she's doing the right thing. Yeah, but now she wants to figure out why he's there. Yeah, which, fair. He has done nothing for two and a half books except be creepy. And kill a bunch of people. And kill a bunch of people. Speaking of which, Van Dien, uh, wearing her sister's clothes, and then that's who, a big what the who fuck. Who busts in? Your friend and mine, heroine of the ages, well, the quick, one and... Oh, yeah, go ahead. Quick question. Side side question. Are Adelius and Van Dien identical? No, they're not twins. Okay, so there was not like a chance of a switcheroo no, happening. No, they're not twins. Uh, one then of them is Van slightly Dien. older than the other one. Okay, I just wanted to make sure I was covering all of the bases. We were reminded, because we were like, are they? Maybe? I don't know. They're not. Yeah, they're not. Great. Just wanted to make sure that there wasn't like Robert Jordan was like, a caper. No. You know what I mean? He just didn't have the tiny Robert. A we tiny love that Robert. from him. So, uh, who busts in the hero of ages, the one and only, your friend and mine, that's right, Denny Colford. Who? Denny Colford. She's got a cudgel and a sword. Oh, sick. And she's, she's thick, and I love her. Team Denny. Team Denny. Denny for fucking president. And uh, she just, she was a, like a bouncer in a tavern, and she would just hit people with a cudgel when I got out of line. A servant came to say that the Lady Dylan has arrived, my lady, and will be at your service as soon as she's freshened herself. And Elaine is like, fuck yeah, I love Dylan. Anytime Dylan shows up, things are interesting. And that is the end of chapter six. We do love when things get interesting. And uh, Allie's gonna go to the airport. We're gonna finish the rest of and this on Zoom. next time you hear this, is gonna be over Zoom. We're not on Zoom. Uh, Long story. Yes. The short version is Allie's not gone after all. Anyway, I'm, it's, it's, I'm it's okay. a couple days later. Everyone's okay. Everything's fine. We just, uh, yeah. Anyway, it, unexpected chapter. Unexpected shit happens and we just roll with life's punches. Chapter 17, Allie. What's it called? It's called um, News for the. No, no? that's chapter 18. Okay, you were on the wrong page. The bron- A bronze bear. A bronze bear. A bear. That's right. Allie. Oh, no, not a bear. Do you have notes for chapter 17, I do, A Bronze but not, Bear? Not very many. Well, not a lot happened. Ooh, Amarilla sucks. Aramilla sucks. We remember oh, that. Amaryllis. Yeah. And, she and sucks. remember uh, uh, Nason? I had forgotten. Creepy, creepy I had Nason. forgotten about Creepy Nason. Yes, and then it all came rushing back. Creepy Nason. The second I heard his name and his really cool granddaughter. She's cool. She's cool. She's on. She's on it. She's like something's up with her, and I like her. Yeah, but Aramilla sucks. Aramilla Nason sucks. Aramilla sucks. Nason really sucks. He is a Nason jackass. Uh. Okay. Also, I had forgotten until reviewing this chapter that 
you do in fact have confirmation that Elaine is not just experiencing the pregnancy rumble. Yes. The building is in fact rearranging itself. Yes, I had forgotten as well. Yes. And then, yeah, I was like, I knew it. I knew that there was something going on here. Yeah. And I might be experiencing my own levels of brain fog. So I was kind of like getting lost in your own house is yes. a little relatable. Very relatable. But I, not everybody. No. Unless everyone just gets infected with fibromyalgia or it, something. It's catching. It's not. No. No. That's just something we get to have sometimes. Uh, I I knew something was up with the corridors being weird. That's my first thing. I love Abram Pensor. Obsessed. He's so dead. Yeah. You know what? I literally reread this chapter an hour ago. I already forgot who this is. He's like a little old guy who is fighting for Elaine. And she's like, he should be dandling grandchildren on his yes. knee. Yes. Okay. Yes. And I was like, yes. damn, I love this guy. Yes. So he's that guy. fucking dead. He's cool. He's yeah. Nice. No, he's dead, though. He's dead. He's dead. Yeah. Bummer. Yeah. I... I like next chapter arrow through the eye. I swear to God. But well, next chapter is a Rand chapter. Somehow it'll happen. Also, did Rojo really name this old man pensioner? He did. He did. Yes. And any day you wake up, maybe you die. Wow, so comforting. Really good. Thank you for really cheery, that. uplifting stuff. But at the in, same time, Andor. really true. So like, who gives a fuck? Do you know yeah, what I mean? It's, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Like, I think about that sometimes. I'm like, I get hit by a bus. Who gives a shit? Yeah, you could. <laughs> Who cares? Um, anyway, uh, somebody ought to have a little pleasure in their lives. Believe, I believe that the little pleasure got you into this situation, Elaine. Yes. I was thinking that myself. So Tenobia's group is close by. I had yeah, forgotten about this. that. Yeah. yeah. Well, you, you would forget about it because we haven't uh, Well, you haven't checked in, checked with, in them with them in a hot second. And all. I still don't know what the hell they're doing. No, you don't. they're looking for Rand. I, and I guess his girlfriend would be a good place to go. The cat has entered the not studio uh -oh. and is now going to make noise. Beaker and I will not apologize for it. To be a part of stuff. Like when I'm on Zooms, he's always like, Oh, is it time for me to show my butthole to That's all they do. That's all they do. person you're talking to? And I'm like, please, God, stop. Chapter 17, A Bronze Bear. Wait, wait, wait. The last thing I wanted to say is, ah, shit. Because yes. I don't like that Aramilla is happy. Nobody should ever be happy if Aramilla is happy. Yeah. She sucks. She's a dick to the staff. Yeah. Beaker, that's Beaker, like, enough. That's, enough, darling. Beaker, All please. Right. He's singing the song of his He people. is. He does that. Mm -hmm. This is constant in our lives. Anyway. So... <laughs> Beaker, please. The people are listening. They Here, can't we'll know how talking. chaotic our lives are. I got him. Yeah. All right. He's being held in my lap right now. Now, now he's going to... He's, he's in gonna, air jail. Yeah. He's so And now okay. he's attempting to run. Oh, God. He's running. He's okay. not running. You're okay. 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 All right. You can go. You can go. Good Lord. He wants my love, and then he doesn't... And then he's like, not he'll, like he'll, this. He'll be back. Oh, yeah, I know. He'll be back. He loves me, though. He, like, loves me kind of an unbelievable yeah. amount. So you were saying. That was too much. Uh, so, Aramilla. Oh, I was saying, ah, shit. Because at the end, she's like, they said they'd take the gold that we're offering them, which I'm assuming, I'm assuming, is the uh, mercenaries. Probably, yes. I'm assuming they're paying off the mercenaries to leave. Yes, probably. That's That seems likely. They're probably pay buying that is, off some mercs. That is the shitty thing about mercenaries. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Is that if somebody's like, how about counteroffer? I give you more money and you leave. I'm just amazed there are so many mercenary armies in and around Andor. It's a lot. It's like eight or nine that we've heard of so far. Maybe they kind of felt like a succession crisis was coming, so they there, figured uh, they'd maybe. just like kind of hang out there and see what happens. Chapter 17, a bronze bear. There's the logo. What is it? It's just a wheel. It's the wheel. Uh, uh, what is the bronze bear in question? Harriet really popped off today. I completely forget. I thought I just assumed that was like Aramilla's sigil she's, or something. She's got the the Game of Thrones style map room. Remember? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Which, you gotta have a map. It's room. It's like it's straight. I'm sure it's no, also a you, real thing. If you're at war, you have to have a map room scene. It is the law. Yeah, but I, I was talking. I think it was Bree. I was talking to about because it's always Bree who I was talking to about this this whole uh, plot line, 
And she was like, yeah, it feels like Robert Jordan looked at George Martin with his fantasy War of the Roses and he was like, well, I should try that. I want to do that. Well, so I mean, that's what writers do. Yeah, that's we, what they do. We try on each other's shit and we get inspired by each other. I mean, that's creativity. It, it feeds into yeah. itself. What's the Mozart, is a, a Mozart? Is there a quote? Yeah, I don't remember exactly what it is. Well, I know, I think there's an is it Oscar Wilde who said like great artists. Yeah, it's the same something. thing. I, I'm sure good Oscar Wilde stole this from Mozart cre- appropriately. Create great artists. Steal yeah, or yeah, something yeah, like yeah. Intelligence innovates. Uh, greatness steals. Something along that. Genius steals. I mean, it's yeah. true. It's I, fine. I mean, well, because, and this is why people people get in this whole thing with the AI stuff where they're like, well, how is it different than, you know, artists kind of copying each other? And I'm like, well, okay, there's being inspired by, and then there is direct Duplicating. Theft. Yeah, it's a difference. Like, you still apply your own voice and life experiences to something. So, yeah. like, we can say, like, oh, yeah. Robert Jordan may have or may not have been inspired by George R. R. Martin's War of the Rose Roses fanfic, which is essentially kind what of Game what of Thrones Game is. of Thrones is. Song of Ice and Fire is, yeah. Yeah. Um, War of the Roses with Dragons. Yeah, it's War of the Roses yeah. with Dragons. Incidentally. Which, hell, we can be inspired by our own past. I'm reading Shogun right now. It is just straight up the end of the Sengoku period with the names different and more Christianity. Yeah. And he got some stuff wrong, but whatever. But whatever. It's very I mean, enjoyable. But yeah, I mean, air on the side of awesome, right? So, yeah. So he he may or may not have been inspired by George R. R. Martin's work, but like, you're going to look at this and not go, this is a direct theft from George R. Right, R. Martin. Right. You're like, this is Robert Jordan's spin on succession crises, yeah. which is different. It is. It's always going to be different. It is. Than w- what Robert Jordan's take on Succession Crisis. George was. Martin. You said Robert Jordan twice. It's, you know what? It's been a long week. I am very tired. Yes. But so, yeah, I feel like, yeah, I feel like. Beaker's uh, back. He's back. Um, yeah, but I, I, so, yeah, when people say the AR, IR sh- art shit, I'm just like, it's direct theft. It's not, it's not the same. Beaker, I'm going to close the door. I'm going to take you outside and close the door. This is called Boundaries Beaker. We're having boundaries with you. Off you go. I know that. Here's the thing about Beaker. He has never shut up. In his life. In his life. And we know this because he was our foster kitten. And we failed and we adopted him and his sister. But when we first got him, uh, it was the very first night we had him. And he was screaming outside of our bedroom door. And he was like all of like this tiny little puff ball and had just been separated from his mother. So it, it I was, felt it was bad. long enough. It, he, he wasn't like bottle fed. He was, you know. Yeah, but he had just he had just reached the age where they separated him from his mother. So they had his mother in one foster home and the kittens with us. Mm-hmm. And there were three of them. And we adopted two out of the three. And because the first one had gotten adopted before we decided to adopt them not because we're like horrible people yeah, yeah. but so uh so i uh i'm hearing him like crying outside of our door you just meowing just like hey can i come hang out no he was he was sobbing uncontrollably like a normal cat does he was sobbing and <laughs> gus goes don't open the door because if you open the door he'll realize that this is how he gets his way and then he'll never shut up again. And I was like, you're a horrible person. He is a baby. I'm going to open the door. I opened the door. He has never shut up a day Not in his life. Not for a fucking second. Not for a fucking second. He is the love of my life, but also the biggest pain in my ass. There was there was a significant period of time where we had to put them in a, like, put them in a, the bathroom with cat beds at night. To yes. to so they would sleep in the bathroom because if we didn't, they would scratch and yell at the door. And it's the kind of thing where many people can sleep fine with their cats coming into the room and crawling on them and meowing and licking on them and shoving their butts in their faces. And I think that's great. I can't. I can't. Yeah. No, it's it's untenable. But now now he's gotten over that. He well the the scratching and screaming at the door for the most part. Every now and then yeah. he'll do it. And then I have to throw a pillow at the door because... Lovingly. Listen, I have limits. <laughs> so, I don't throw it at him. No. I just God, make a never. loud noise. So a bronze bear 
politics chap. Hot Andorran politics. Hot politics. So Hot here's political the thing. action. Here's the thing. Kind of. It's mostly just like, remember these people? Here's the thing. I like... I like the succession crisis, actually. I'm going to I'm gonna come out here and say... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like it. I think it's intriguing and interesting. Uh, I also think it's interesting that the corridors are changing. Yes, yes. That's weird. That's weird. Uh, Robert Jordan, it feels like, is kind of back on his game with the scary. He's having fun with it. He's having fun with it. He's like, you know what? I miss... I, I miss the occasional thrills. Bring back the creepy flies from book two. Yes. He's saying, like, you remember the fucking weird And this is what I've been asking flies? for, is I don't necessarily need, like, complete plot momentum. I just need, like, the occasional Lord of the Flies. Interesting thing. This is what I've been asking for. So I Sink like... Sinking peddlers. Yeah. I don't necessarily need it to be, like, full steam ahead. I just want some, like, intrigue. Yeah. Uh, to go with my reading. So, first of all, uh, suspicious that the corridors are changing could be just a bubble of evil type thing. Seems like a consistent one if it is. But it feels like the bubbles is. of evil are like usually pretty temporary. Like yeah. they just happen and they go away. Well, but this is like ghosts, right? Because ghosts is were just kind of happening places. Because I don't think it's ghosts. Well, oh, you mean like the, In the, the general impact of ghosts, of ghosts? Where it's just like, now there's ghosts. Now architecture is fucked. I would also maybe check for like some kind of heavy metal poisoning or probably something. you know you what? know like there are definitely Get a natural carbon monoxide explanations detector. yeah there are definitely natural yeah. explanations for why this might open be open the window in the kitchens while you're cooking yeah yeah like the, this is actually a story that we have not told on the podcast oh and that i will be very brief it was about like slightly embarrassing. but i did nearly kill the entire family you didn't nearly kill because us. i was cooking with all the windows closed and using a lot of cooking spray and Allie had a wax melter going and then after half an hour, I was like, mm, my peripheral vision is gone. We need to leave the house. And it was fine. So, yeah, it was fine. Ultimately, what was funny is I didn't notice that anything was wrong until Gus mentioned it, because my fibro being what it is, I just figured yeah, that I, was just like I another day with, with Allie. fibro. Allie was playing Baldur's Gate and I was like, is my face drooping? Am I having a stroke? And she said, no. And I said, I looked at the screen and I was like, I don't know what's happening on the screen. And she looked up and she went, oh, me neither. And I have it for a while. And I said, we need to, <laughs> we like, need to oh, get no. the animals and we need to get yeah, out of the so house. Yeah, so we got the animals. We got them out of the out house. Of the house. Everything, was fine. everything was fine. We had them in the car and they were all like freaked out. Everything it, worked out in the we end. we were freaked out. Uh, ventilation. And we were like, Open oh, the window yeah. next time. The, yeah, all right. But it was winter time. In California. But it was winter time. Sure. It was the time of winter. Sure. You don't think to open your windows in the winter sure. time. Anyway. But yeah. So anyway. Check uh, check for that, Elaine. Ventilate your house. Yeah. Um. So yeah. So Elaine's. There's a German word for like opening up all the windows and airing it out. I forget what it is. Someone will tell us. Yeah. I'm sure. I mean, so yeah. So I am going to go on my pedestal and say I like the succession crisis. I like the corridors changing. That's all very weird. Um, I like, oh, and Birgitta is doing things, which I like. Yeah. Uh, and then Van Deen shows up. Yes. And Van Deen is like, what's her face? Rosacea Cordy is dead. Rihanna. Rihanna Corley. Which one's that one? The old lady who you the were in charge super, one? yeah, the one you were like, were huge number one fan of, who was so excited to be a novice. No, I'm thinking of. I knew she was going to die. You did, you did. Wait a minute. Yeah, it was her. I knew she was going to die. I said, I was like, oh, she's too happy. Yeah, yeah, she's dead now. She, you know what? She and Grandpappy Pensioner, they're dead. And I'm only calling him Pensioner because that's literally what his, his name, name is. Yeah. Grandpappy and she are in the sky well, together because they're too happy. She is actually dead now. So that's a bummer. Now, Ali, they're does, too happy and cute. Does the fact that it was Van Deen who broke this news, discovered and broke this news? She is suspicious does that, as fuck. Does that add to the or narration? From? Is doing fucking James Bond avoiding bullets well, to but, try but and make my, her seem is, sympathetic? This is my question. She's the one who apparently discovered this. But what oh, she, what she did said? She? Hold on. Let's let's play this out. What she said was, "Hey." It turns out somebody's been murdering the kin. They were leaving clues, but it looks like we were not picking up on the clues, so they decided to make the clues more obvious. 
So is that in and of itself That's the third, weird. the third level of clue is her going, I've been leaving clues and you idiots haven't been picking up on them? I want to know or why. Or does this, does this free her of your suspicion? So they must be killing the kin because that's a threat. Like having an additional group of magic women who are not bound by the oaths. That's an unpredictability that Elaine thinks they it's need to for Aramilla. No. Okay. That's down the lane. Respectfully, no. That's not it. It's because if we're thinking about the dark side, right? Slash like the kin, the kin had something to do with, um, there was something going on with the kin when Adelius died. What was it? There was something going on. Like they no. were the ones bringing her food. Was that a thing? Maybe. Now the question is, you know, but, here, but we got to linger on this. She's pretty sure that it's either Cariana or Saritha. Oh, is she? I don't give a fuck. So... I, I don't think it is either They do of those think people. it's cleared Marilla Lily because she's gone. She's fucked up. Yeah, that does clear her. That's true. And so theoretically we've narrowed it down, but we haven't. These two other random chicks, no one cares about them. Who has cared about them this whole time? Nobody cares about them. I don't care about them. You don't care about them. No one cares about them. We can't even remember their stupid names. There's no way. So okay, so we're going back to Van Dean. Why would Van Dean Reveal her reveal own plot. Reveal her own plot. It's sad. Is it it's one of those... kind of funny to me that she's like killing people, being very obvious about it. And she's like, I'm going to be more obvious about it. Still no one notices. And she's like, okay, damn. I guess I got to just come out and say that I'm doing this. But like, go like, we're all trying to find the guy who did this. Like that guy in the hot dog yeah, costume. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, on think, what's I, it called? I, I think you should leave. Yeah, she's yeah. literally that guy on I think you should leave. She's there going, we're all trying what to find this, the guy who this did too this. Much? Isn't this too much? This isn't too much? Leandrin was too much in my mind. That's and true. then it was like, oh, no, actually, the thing that's trying to kill you is the thing that's trying to kill you. We, we're actually not going to trick you at all. We some writers are not trying to trick us. Maybe that's fair. Or I mean, maybe this is someone trying to trick us. It is. It is him trying to trick us because yes, why would she reveal this? Yeah. Now the question is, yeah, why is it to sow discord among the ranks, make her not trust the other two? Because obviously, her conclusion again is going to be like she wouldn't kill her own sister, and why would she reveal this plot to me? Right. The narrative is going out of its way to make us not look at Van Deen as a threat and well, a problem. The, the narrative has explicitly, the, let me clarify that. Elaine's point of view has dismissed Van Deen as a suspect from day one. From day one, which to me, that's a problem. Okay. We should not be dismissing anyone off of feelings because we have seen that dark friends, we've heard like dark friends are able to, willing to kill their own children. Like we, we have are, heard that we we cannot be giving benefit of the doubt just because someone lost their sister. We can't, and we can't be giving we can't be giving benefit of the doubt to nice old ladies, which I think I am guilty of doing potentially with Varen. You think potentially? No, uh-huh. because we, I'm very suspicious of the show combining you Van Deed and this. Varen. Yes, yes. To me, that's a problem, and I've been suspicious of Varen a little bit from the time that she was like compelling people. Now I'm kind of like, what's going on there? And maybe Robert's not trying to trick us on there. Could be. Could be a Leandrin thing all over again where I'm like, but I like Varen. I do too. I think she's cool. Does that mean she's a good person? We'll find out. Well, could that be that she's like a good person masquerading as a bad person? Could be. Who knows? But she's she is a problem. She's suspicious. So, okay. So Van Dien, but also the combination with Van Dien. Again, I don't think Van Dien is a good person. I think she tried to be a good person. Like, she wanted to be a good person and protect her sister. But that was like, eh, no. So what's going on here? Why is she coming forward? Why is she making it obvious? Because she wants Elaine to know that the kin are being murdered to cast more suspicion on the other two. So division in the ranks. Right, okay. Make the kin afraid. <sighs> eliminate the kin who are a, like, additional problem. Well, because she's got those other two kinswomen spending, like, all of their time with Which her. Which is weird. Is she maybe trying to, like, pull some to her side, maybe? I don't know. Well, have there been, like, dark friend kin? Never. 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 The the the, the black Aja mm. did not know the kin existed. That doesn't necessarily mean there are no dark friend kin. There's just no black Aja kin. Sure, that's fair. But it's the kind of thing where most likely... I think somebody would have relayed info back. 
Maybe, but they but people didn't know the Black Aja existed. I mean, there were rumblings, but yeah, but dark friends, you know, dark friend cells, dark friend circles. Yeah, but like the Black Aja don't even know who the Black Aja are. Yeah, okay, but I don't know. So the kin to me in uh, okay, I'm literal Satan. Okay, I'm I am an a Satan worshiper. I you know actually the Satanic Temple is apparently a really cool group of people. <laughs> but all right, so I'm like the kind though that would suck. Um, let's see. And I, my goal is to sow chaos, right? That's like the whole goal. But the goal is to sow chaos that aids me. The kin represent a chaotic potential element that could be used against me that we had not calculated into our equation of chaos, right? This could be a problem. This could be a a useful resource. But if we create discord and it's a very strong well-organized group of women with talents that previously have not been known about right like being able to what like stretch your shield or whatever like lots of stuff that that we didn't know you could do well it's a lot of Aes Sedai who were not quite good enough to be Aes Sedai but are still pretty good at stuff well or I, runaways. I mean, this is why I think that the Aes Sedai have made a mistake just focusing on strength, because a strength and ability are completely yeah, different well, things. Yeah, well, this is the thing, and I feel like the text is pretty pretty upfront about that, too, with, like, the Aeel, you know, the wise ones. Yeah, I mean, there there is, there are more ways to be useful than just one. Yeah, certainly. Like, what if what if those minds are really good researchers? Yeah. We know. I mean, clearly they have abilities that they never even knew about. Mm-hmm. So like they have hamstrung themselves with the ageism. They've hamstrung themselves with the strengthism. I don't know. With the with the, you know, weird, rigid standards that they've had. They've actually hamstrung themselves completely. And this is actually a larger statement. I think about society as a whole. Yeah, when we that. are not uplifting and supporting individuals where they're at and allowing them to reach their fullest potential, we all suffer. I agree with that. So, on that note, we got to take a real quick ad break. Welcome back. That may have been unnecessary. If it was, I'll just make it this, so that there are more ad breaks with fewer ads in them. Anyway. Anyway, Van Dien. So she's trying to sow some level of chaos, maybe disruption amongst the kin and their ranks, and so maybe some suspicion between the kin and the Aes Sedai, because she specifically said she was smo- smothered with the power. Yes, so she's with, going with, out of her way to make sure. so much of the power that it was completely unnecessary to have used that much. Mm. Here, I- I'm going to skip ahead. I-, I feel like we don't need to talk about no. most of the... Like, do you want to say anything about all of the uh, Bramlet and Pelivar and the kids and goat's milk and all of that and Dialin and the fact that... Oh, I really want to that... talk about Van Dien. Okay, here, we'll, we'll, we'll do the Reader's Digest version. It's now six Elaine, six Aramilla, six Undecided. Oh, uh, right, right, right. And And they were like... Uh, and and Elaine had some doubts. She was like, maybe I should have said I'm going to cast, but put my support behind Dialin. And w- she did. She said, Elaine never thought about supporting Dialin. No, Alora- there was a, a moment, a I moment that so. she had. Yeah, she uh, where I was like, wow, that's a real moment of humanity there for you, Elaine. I really appreciated that. Yeah, yeah. She had a minute where she was like, huh? Oh, there it is. Yeah. Uh, yeah. She wondered if, like, if, you know, in order to save Andor, if it really came down to it, if she would put her support behind Dial. To Dylan. save Andor, she would have thrown her support to Dial, and not gladly, but to save Andor's blood, she would have. Yeah, and so she's mad that Aramilla wouldn't do the same thing. Like, because yeah. Aramilla, right now, it's like, whatever, Borderlanders, like, yeah, I don't I care if you sack Andor. I, yeah, which they're not going to do. Which they're not going to do, but Elaine kind of implied that they would do, and then Elaine was like, or allowed their presence to apply that they would. And then as like kind of a test for Aramilla to maybe be like, until we get rid of the Borderlanders, can we have like basically a uh, an armistice? Well, and at the same time, the unaligned group also reached out to her to sue for peace. And she was like, no. So, yeah. So she sucks. Yeah. Um, 
And so Elaine's like, I mean, I would do what I needed to do if it was like the difference between, yeah, you know, and or being okay and and or not being okay. And I kind of, I really appreciated that. Yeah. So anyway, wanted to touch on that. Yeah, uh, it's and, a detente. And they talked about how that's the probably other the wrong six, word. Every time I say that word, I go, I think that's the wrong word. Whatever. And they're talking about how basically the other six are like sitting back to basically see, see if how they kill each out. other, yeah. and then maybe they have a good claim. Yeah. Which, that also sucks. Yeah. What a sucky thing to do. Well, and it's a class, I feel like this is kind of a classic, you know, three-way type of standoff over well, yeah. a city where it's like, neither one wants to attack the city because they will be weakened and then the other one will sweep in behind them. Yeah, but I'm just saying, I feel like Elaine will remember this. Probably. Telltale game style. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Not in a, like, vengeful way, no, but no. just in a, like, oh, you want my help now? Uh, yeah, but anyway, Van Deen. So let's talk about Vandine. So she's suspicious. Yeah, sowing discord, sowing chaos, distrust. Because I think I think the thought is that the kin need to be. Oh, uh, there's also this thing where Vandine comes in. She's like, why are you like near drowning in the power? Oh, yeah. Because she's been holding as much of the power as she possibly could since like three chapters ago. There's a question that I have where it's like maybe the babies are sensing vibes. How? I don't know. They're, they're not. I don't know. They're not. It, it's not. Uh, uh, I'll, it's not like Dune. I'll tell you. It's not. It's not Dune. It's this is not Paul Atreus. Well, I guess spoilers. This is not that one baby in Dune. OK. Yeah. It's I a wasn't regular. Sure if they were like Van Deen's around. Hold a, a bunch of power. Clump. No, she's been holding the power since a few chapters ago when she oh. was able to grab it. And she just forgot. OK, that's relatable, though. Yeah. I would forget, too. I find her relatable, and uh, uh, pregnant Elaine is relatable to me. Yeah, which I'm looking into, <laughs> but um, not the pregnancy thing, just the brain fog. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. So, uh, so Van Dien comes in, suspicious as fuck. Okay, so you brought up a good point where you were like, "But the kinswomen are those two kinswomen are with her all the time. Is she trying to recruit them? That's a maybe, right? Because." If you have this new unknown group, you're going to want some agents of chaos, but also potentially to give herself some plausible deniability too. Yeah. Like if the kinswomen are like, does she know about gateways? Who? Bandy. Yes. Mm. But having them around her all the time gives her some level of, but we're with her all the time. Like when would she have had the ability yeah, to possible. do that? And it's like, I don't know when she said she was going to take a pee could and they be. could gateway. Could do took two minutes to quickly smother somebody could do and i'm like if she's already killed her sister she's not exactly going to have a bunch of problems with killing a bunch of basically strangers probably not um yeah i think it's her okay any other uh because i don't give a shit about the other two and I, I mean and that with Saritha? all the respect in the world here it sounds like the dog has now come to the door so you keep talking i'm gonna let him in the one i give a shit about is van Deen. And she's the one that seems the least likely. Therefore, in my mind, she's kind of the most likely from a narrative perspective. And I get why Elaine wouldn't want to suspect her of doing such a vile, monstrous thing. Because she's like a cute old lady. And who wants to believe that somebody you're hanging out with would be guilty of fucking slaughtering their sibling? But at the same time, it's the most interesting choice. It is. And the character we actually know anything about. Yes. As opposed to... And she's to been around for a while. Cariana and Saritha, whom I know nothing about. And this makes the readability, like rereadability, so good. It does. Because then you, like, see... And I just <clears throat> can't get over that they're in bumblefuck middle of nowhere. And Moraine is reading some of their books and she gets attacked by a Drakkar. That is weird. That's bullshit. Yeah. No. Uh, do you want to talk about Aramilla's section? Because I feel like there's not really anything else to recap in the Elaine section. Aramilla now, to, sucks. To the per I'm sure there's somebody who's listening who, because every time we skip a section, somebody goes, oh man, but that's my favorite five page section in the book is the part where... But we talked about it. No, no, no. I, I think this is... I, I enjoy this. Somebody goes like, oh man, that's one of my favorite chapters. And then they point out some really cute character thing that I completely glossed over and forgot about. So whatever we are doing that with right now, my bad. Let us know. We'll we'll highlight it yeah. next time. 
Yeah, I feel like okay. So we got Aramilla. She's paying off those mercenaries. I think. I Seems think that's like the it. problem. You've got Nason who wants to grow. I think they what's her name came to her, and, and she's like, "Oh yeah, with the what's her name, Elenia." He's like, "I'm." She's like, "I'm going to believe, make her believe that at any moment I could make that happen." Great. F- wonder, fuck Elenia. Wonder, wonderful bloom, lady. Bloom, bloom, bloom. Yeah. I fucking hate Elen- uh, uh, Aramilla. And uh, uh, Elenia, uh, 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 the, the guys. Granddaughter. I also like Elenia. This is who you're backing. Yeah, it was this the thing is where who she, you're she, getting behind. She bailed out Elenia and Nayan. Remember? Oh yeah. She rescued them and forced them to swear to her. Yeah, I would go back and on. She that. keeps like firing servants and having people beaten and stuff. And I mean, she is smart in that she's like, yeah, I'm gonna have the cook beaten and then let go then because he, I can't trust him after that. I'm like, he would sneeze he would, in your would, shit yeah. for the rest of your life. I like. Sil- you are correct. I like Sylvais. Sylvais is the granddaughter, right? Yeah. I like Sylvais. See, she's How old fun. is she? Like twenty, maybe. Oh, and they talked about giving those kids over to like get tortured or whatever. Yeah. Something like that. She was like, if they don't swear to me, I'll like give him over to what's his face and his cords. Yeah, I don't know what the fuck uh, Master get... Lunalt and his cords are. And his cords. I feel like it's beatings. It seems like yeah, it. Yeah, like you beat him with a cord. I would be queen by sunset of the day Camelin falls to me. Isn't that right, father? And... You seem like you'd be really fun for, for, for everyone involved and or would really thrive under your leadership. And I love how... Sil- what? Sil- Can I ask yeah, one question? Yeah. And then we'll talk about Sylvais because I want to talk about Sylvais. Why is it the worst fucking people think they should be in charge? Because to be running a country, I feel like you have to have a certain amount of ego. Yeah, because I feel like that's... Yeah, because the, like... Like, Dylan is correct. That is the worst job. To to seek out command of this sort, you need to have a certain amount of ego. This is why I think Dylan is, might be one of my favorite characters. Dylan's great. I'm, Dylan's like, I don't want to be fucking queen. Fuck that. You're, you'd be a much better queen, and also I don't want it. Is kind of the correct response. Like, I feel like, you know, I feel like it's the worst job. Yes. It's the worst job. Yes. Why would you want that? It's like millions of people every time they stub their fucking toe blaming you. And you can't possibly make millions of people's lives awesome. No. Like that's impossible. This is why local elections are very yes. are just as important, if not yes. more important, than broader elections. So Sylvace, every time she keeps on like looking sharp and then she goes back to looking vapid. And Aramilla's like, must be a trick of the light. No, Sylvais is sharp. She's a smarty pants McGee. I feel like she's also got a really cool name. She does. Robert Jordan popped off with her name. He did. Really good job. And they bring her a letter that's like, hey, they said, yeah, they want the money up front. Yeah, uh, that's going to suck. She feels good. And that's the end of the chapter. Okay, here's the thing. Here's the thing. And now I'm like, okay, what does Elaine do now? Because obviously at least two of those bands of whatever is going to leave if not all of them well luckily uh charles guy bond with his ten thousand men just showed well, up well thank fuck for thank charles guy bond guy bond but do you think this is a charles guy bond appreciation hour do you think she'd she'd enlist imagine the... if i named it the charles guy bond appreciation hour when we only mentioned him at the very end i think that's kind i of think iconic. i must i think we have to yeah what else is the there guy anything is else? the actual charles guy bond will listen to it and be like god damn it god damn it where am i wait no we mentioned we him twice you. you're right we've mentioned him twice I we love, love charles guy bond charles wherever guy bond, he may not, be oh no i have to name it a tiny robert oh yeah you do yeah no you do because that's really important yeah. to me i love the tiny robert mm, i love the tiny robert what wait uh there was more I want to say. Okay, if I were Elaine, what would I do? So she's got the 10,000. Is that enough? No. Is there a way to enlist the Borderlanders? No. Is there a way to Well, get... there's a reason she wouldn't. Why? It's a foreign army. Oh. For some reason, mercenaries are fine. Can we get the band? That's all... Also... Well... I mean, we don't know where they are. I don't know. I think the band would also not be acceptable... They're I mercenaries. Yeah, though. but like, I don't really understand where the line and, is. And Matt's her like good friend. Because. That she yells at a lot. Matt's, <laughs> Matt's doing that thing in fucking goddamn other Murindy where, not Matt, but the band is doing that thing in Murindy where they just like stand in yeah, the country. Yeah, which gave her that idea. But. But is but, that over? N- I don't know. We haven't seen the band. 
Um, That's why I'm saying, have we it, gone to, popped over? It sounds like she couldn't enlist the band to fight for her for the same reason she couldn't enlist the Borderlanders, but she can enlist all these other mercenaries, which I don't really get. It sounds like she's also got this like band, this like army of basically what happened in, where is it called? Where they take all the kids and the old men and they have them fight in Lord of the Rings. The Battle of... Helm's Deep? Thank you. It feels like she's got that group. The L? What are you talking about? No, you know how, like, although, like, old people... Oh, she and has the, a ragtag yeah, army. She's got, like, a ragtag army. And she's army. just, like, growing her forces. And then she's got forces. this 10,000 group. It's all... Are she's got all a lot of, of the guards, mercenaries man. gonna go? I don't know. Because it seems like only two of them really sucked. Yeah. Only two of those I don't have a really good groups. grasp on how many groups of mercenaries either side really has. Do both sides have mercenaries? Yes, because um, because both sides are relying primarily on Oh, so she's telling them mercs. to come fight for Remember, her. there's the whole thing where it's like, I'm not going to shoot him while he's running because he's also a merc. So she's hiring, it sounds yeah, and I like know him. she's hiring the, the mercs in the city to turn coat and work for her. Which is going to work, I Probably, think. Probably, they, they're mercs. For at least mercs. a big group of them. Yeah. So, yeah, so we're presenting obstacles. They're apparently we're throwing like rocks at a lane yeah. in the tree. We, yes. Um... I don't understand why these mercenaries are okay, but the band wouldn't be. I'm assuming maybe, it's, maybe they're Andorran mercenaries. I also thought maybe, maybe the problem is, is that like their Matt's group. But he's Andorran. Yeah, but then like they oh, can the kind dragon? of credit Rand with maybe? helping her. I feel like the- Because like, she said she really doesn't want- she doesn't want to be given to the swoop throne, in and give it to her. But I feel like the line for like what she can accept as help and what she can't is really fuzzy because she can buy mercenaries to fight for her. And she's got Aes And that's Dye. fine. And she's got kinswomen from very much out of the country yeah. helping her. And she's got Maybe the she, sea folk helping her. Has she her. just not thought of the band? I, I don't know. I guess. Or does I, she... Well, the band I think is also currently still under contract to help in Murindy. Well, I, think I it's suppose. Murindy. But I just—is there anything? Is there any other group she can enlist? Can she go? She's not going to get the Aiel to go do that. The that Aiel would be a left. bad idea. Remember the Aiel left. I know, which yeah. was really annoying. And they were, they, she also forbade them helping. Yeah, There's because that whole thing where it's the whole foreign yeah. army thing. Uh, is there anywhere else she can go? But she also keeps getting like every day more people gateway in. The city's under siege, but more people are teleporting in every day. Yeah, but so I'm like, I'm trying are growing. to think. Aramil is really confident she can take the city. I'm not sure why. Well, because to me, I'm because like, this is. Because she keeps getting rebuffed. Go ahead. Well, because she's thinking that like all of Elaine's forces are going to turn right, on her. And she doesn't good, think that point. the gateways are real. <laughs> she said that like, oh, so-and-so is bought into the rumors that like they can do this and they have Aes Sedai on their side. So I think she thinks that it's just the freaking what's her face is? The mercenaries. But yeah, I think so. I think there's that going on. But it's kind of starting to feel Helm's Deepy to me. Uh, yeah, kind of. There's like a Helm's Deepy quality. Where is it, where, so I'm like, where's like, wh who's going to be the Gandalf coming in at the last minute to help out? But uh, yeah, yeah, I don't know. It, I, you, I, I mean, guess, unless yeah. Elaine comes up with some sick battle strategy. She might. Which she might. Daughter Air and all that. She's supposed to be very savvy. She might. Yeah. That'd be pretty sick of her. I don't think I, I've all I've long said I think Elaine dies. I you don't think it's here. You don't she's think not it's pregnant she's, enough. Right. She's not pregnant enough well, for the, me because the baby's half must be born healthy. Yes. So she's not pregnant enough for uh, for her to die here. So she's got to win unless we push this battle off for like three more books. Hey man, we could. We might. We might. I think at least the Perrin getting his wife back battle has to happen. Sure. I think that's got to be a climax. We're halfway through. We're at the midpoint basically right now, right? Approximately halfway. Yes. So I think we've got to have soonish some kind of big moment. We haven't seen Egwene in a minute either. We have not seen her. Egwene or her Rand? Book? Nor, well, Rand, I'll tell you we next We saw chapters, Egwene Rand. like at the beginning. In the... I think. Pro law? Yeah, chapter two. Yeah. Very briefly. Yeah. We saw Egwene. She's not having a good time, but they weirdly are not killing her, which, I mean, I guess that's because they don't want to martyr. Right, that is why. Yeah. Uh. Okay. 
Well, I, I'm assuming you don't want me to see what the other what the POV lineup is. No, I'm not going to let you see it. Damn it. Um. Okay. Yeah. So parent, I think at least parent and you'll get back together this book. Sure. But does the succession crisis get solved? We'll have to Raffo. I want Moraine thing, the Moraine thing to get solved, but MRC? that is taking its sweet fucking time. Moraine rescue chap imminent? Oh. Is it? Is it? It might be. I don't know, man. And I don't know what Rand's got going on. Uh, last time we saw him, he was having oh, a nap. Oh, oh, He's going to no, make the peace Shand- with the Sean Chan. I keep forgetting about that. Well, because that. that's the thing is they- Because I don't want that to be true. They posit in this chapter, they're like, oh, I guess Brigitte's like, I guess he's taking all the Aiel so we can go fuck the Sean Chan up. Nope. That's what I would want. You'd think, but But no. I don't get what I want, apparently. So, yeah, we've got- News for the dragon next. Uh, news flash, it's Semarog. <laughs> well, we're at the midpoint, so that's got to be what happens, right? This is what's being set up. We're at the midpoint, so a moment, a big moment. Uh, Robert Jordan does this. He likes to have like kind of a chill, uh, like the prologue pops off in like, the first couple chapters, and then we get like a little bit of like easing, reminding us what everything is again. And then we get kind of like intrigue, 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 midpoint. And then midpoint usually will pop off a bit. Some kind of battle. So I'm feeling like that's got to be the Semarog shit. Semarog imminent. Yeah. Imminent Semarog. Imminent Semarog. Does this mean that Rand kills Semarog this book? I don't... hmm. We got a weird amount of Forsaken deaths recently. We had like... Didn't we have a book where like three of them died? No. Well, because we lost uh, Osengar. Oh, right. We lost... I always forget about Samael. Samael was book seven. Well, who do we have left? Osengar was Masana, book nine. Masana, Magedian. We have Masana, Magedian, Semarag, Morden, Lanfear, Morden. Sindane, yeah. Um, oh, come on. Lanfear, sure. Erengar. Did I say Erengar? No. Erengar. That's eight. Eight Forsaken left? <laughs> Damon Dread. Oh, Damon, nine. Okay. I think we could lose one this book. And well, Semarok's only, kind of... The only ones that are gone, gone are Balal, Robin. It seems like he's not bringing Osengar. back... Osengar. Osengar got bail fired. Oh, right, right, right. So Sorry. Osengar's I mean, gone, it, gone. It seems like he's not bringing back Samael. No. Because Robert Jordan said Sammy is toast. That sucks. And it does. He was my favorite one. He he kind he's of was the, the most iconic... One. Yeah, and, uh, and it is uh, iconic too, though that he went yeah. out in fog. It is hilarious that he just yes stepped incorrectly. He, That's kind yes. of funny. So I think we're due though for a forsaken death that isn't funny because like we've had we've had a couple funny ones in a row. Osengar's was hilarious. Oh, and Ismodian is not. Oh, coming. Ismodian, right? Okay, so that's fine. Unless he does, but I don't know. The dark ones aren't going to bring. So him we back. only have eight left. Yeah, we only have eight left. Yeah. Because they were 13. Yeah. And now we're down to eight. Well, I feel like we've only got, what, four books left? Three and a half? So we've got to start killing these people. Yes. Sounds like it. We've got to start neutralizing these threats. So I could see a world, but uh, the midpoint seems like a weird time for Samarag to bite it. Well, especially because we haven't seen her. That would be odd. We've gotten like two scenes from her. In a while, I mean. Yeah. Yeah. Although I guess Samael just she did was like, hey, everybody, let's fight. The entire Sean Chan royal family. Off camera. Off camera. Yeah. Uh, and she tortured that guy to death. And then we've seen her kind of like hanging out. Chilling. Yeah. Well, shall we read on and continue? Suroth might be toast. I could see a world in which Suroth bites it soon. Well, let's Raffo. Raffo? Thanks for listening, everyone. We have social media. If you want to know what we've got going on, it's linked down below. We also have a Patreon. If you want to support us that way, it's patreon.com slash wheeltakes. And you can always leave us a rating and a review, which helps a lot. Other than that, anything else, Sally? Oh, yeah. this this was episode 203 of the Wheel Takes book episodes. Anything else, Sally? Are you keeping track now? I am now. Oh. I always have. I've just never shared that information. Oh, that's fun. Yeah. 203. Huh. Well, uh, my last thought is Van Dien is guilty. Thanks for listening, everyone. Bye. Bye.